After uh, Moshe had given the charge, what had to be done, and the previous posuk had said immediately, the Moshe. The level of zeal and alacrity was to such a level that they all went out literally simultaneously to address whatever the obligation was to bring about the Mishkan. And they came, all those that were, ins were inspired by their hearts. Okay? So the term over here is Nesolibo. Those who were Nesolibo, they were inspired by their hearts. And all those who came with a generous spirit. So speaking of two, two classifications of people. One who was inspired by his heart and one who had a generous spirit. Also, they had brought the tithing of Hashem for the work that was needed for the Olmoed. So over here, so first what is the difference between the soul libo? And not the Rucho. Additional point, when we speak about the soul libo, the Torah uses the term kol ish. Ish is an expression of distinction. Ish. The person, the ish who was inspired by his heart, when we speak about not the Rucho, the one who had generous spirit, the word ish is not mentioned. Does say kol ish and the soul libo, kol ish ashen not the Rucho. It only mentions ish, which is an expression of distinction when we speak with soul libo. In the next posuk, we speak about all who had a generous heart. Before we speak, not verucho. It was due to his generous spirit. Here we speak about nidiv lev. That means. You gave your heart. The div is a person who's generous. He has a generous heart. Okay? So over here, there's the... The Rechaim HaKadosh. Over here, Chofalif. If you have a Mikroski Dolz Chumish, Vayavo Kodishesh in the so, Pirish Omro, in the so Libo Vinodvo. This is the Torah speaks about two classifications of people the so Libo and Nodvo Rucho. Da, Keshne Hadrogos Bimsnadvim. He says the two classifications of people who are donors, two types of people who, 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 who are donors. Hechru Misnadi Birozo Navsho. Person gives due to his generosity to his best ability. Meaning, based on his financial ability, he gives to that degree. Meaning, he doesn't do it, it's not painful for him to give it, but he gives it due to his generous spirit. But to what degree does he give? Based on his financial capability. The second person, the soul libo, is a person who gives even more than his financial capacity. Because of the overwhelming goodness of his heart. Therefore, he's classified as the one who's inspired by his heart. His heart uplifts him, uplip, uplifts him, and he's like evaluated as if he'd be a wealthy man. Yosi Mashu to give even more than he's capable of giving something which is precious. So the two classifications: I will do my best. I will give as much as I can. 
So what is the person's evaluation of himself? I feel I could give so much. It's because I have a generous spirit. It's not painful. I'm happy to give it. But how much could I give? As much as I think I could give. A person who's inspired by his heart, he gives even beyond his capacity because of the goodness of, of his heart. If the problem has to be addressed, he will give even more than his capacity to be able to address the problem. Among the Jewish people, there were two, these two classifications of donors. The first classification is the more, the more advanced one. First we speak about the person who was inspired by his heart, uplifted by his heart. The dictate Gloma Tevas Ish. And we speak about the first, which is a more advanced, more special classification of person. He's classified as Ish. That's an expression of distinction, Loshin Chashivus. That's an expression of Chashivus, a special distinction. The second person is he's giving due to, he has a giving spirit, he's a generous spirit. He's not, doesn't have the same value as the first classification. We find, we find about all those, the donors who gave to the Mishkan, these two classifications, and both of them are considered praiseworthy. Nobody gave because he felt that he was forced, coerced, compelled to do it. Rather, one is at a more advanced level than the other. So, dictate loma he viu is trumas Hashem. They both brought trumas Hashem. They did it l'shem shemayim. They did it for the sake of God. They tithed it. It was trumas Hashem. Lirmos lebechino hanelemis to address and allude to this characteristic, which is not obvious. Sheromas b'omer yaviyo as trumas Hashem. They brought to Chubas Hashem, who was the Kavona. Very often, two people do the same thing. It's not obvious. Only the person knows whether he's doing it, what it, the intent is. And that's dependent upon the heart. What's your feeling? Do you, do you feel pinched by it? Or you're happy to do it? But the question is is it due to the, the generosity of your heart, or it's because you're inspired by your heart? If you're inspired by heart because of the issue, you give even beyond your capacity. If it's, you have a generous spirit, I will give generously, but to what degree? To the degree that I feel I'm able to give. Not, I can't cross a line. I always give the example. Person has a very good friend, and he falls on hard times and has to be helped. And he goes to his good friend, and his good friend wants to help him. To what degree does he help him? He helps him, gives him generously. So the friend says to him, could you do a little better? He gives a little bit more. Then he says, what about could you do a little bit better? He says, I'm sorry. I can't go beyond that point. I've given you all I could give you. Now, this person has a son who has the exact same problem as this very close friend. And his son presents his problem to his father, and he does beyond what he did for his closest friend. For his friend, he did his best. For his son, he goes beyond that. Why does he do for his son beyond that? Because his son is in need, and it's a son, so therefore, if it's my son's problem, I want to address the problem. I don't want my son to have a problem. It's more than giving out of generosity in my heart. It's because the way I'm touched because I appreciate what has to be done, I go beyond. But in terms of my best friend, I'll go very often, I'll do my best. What is my best? As long as I, I don't go beyond a certain point, as long as it's not going to infringe on me, once it starts infringing on my need, I, I draw the line, I don't go beyond that line. My son, I don't draw any line. I do whatever I feel I could do to alleviate his problem or to put him where I want him to be. The soul legal means 
that the person himself is inspired by his heart. Why is he inspired? He's uplifted by his heart because of the need of the issue that has to be addressed. So, it's not only I value, I see it's important. It has to be addressed. If all that matters, it has to be addressed, you go beyond your capacity. You don't even think about yourself. You only think about the issue that has to be addressed. But if you think, if you're giving out of the generous spirit, I'm generous, therefore I give as much as I can. But the, there's a line you draw in the sand, you don't go beyond that line. So over here, he uses the term, the soul libo, or not the The next pasuk, the Torah uses the term, vaivo ad noshim ad noshim, called nidiv leiv. We don't use the verb, not the rucho. He has a generous heart. The heart itself is generous. So Rashi says, what's, what is that? So over here, the Rechaim HaKadosh explains. If take a look at the in the Rechaim HaKadosh, the right column, third paragraph. The dignate law and the div lave. There's a difference between a person who gives due to the generosity of his heart or a person is the now he's a nidiv lev. He has, his heart is generous. A person who gives due to his heart, not to his spirit. Spirit means I'm touched. I'm touched because you touched me, therefore I'm giving you this. The dev live lave itself because you touched, you have a generous heart. That's the that's the essence of the person. Yeshid Venel Harbe, Yeshid Venomat. So people, it depends what kind of spirit, to what degree you touched, to that degree you're going to give. Avol, the div lave, Yomar al lave nadiv. The heart is a generous heart. Who are Romus Mom Rashen so libo. The the div lave is Ashen so libo. That is the person who was inspired by his heart. A person who has a generous heart, he'll even give beyond his capacity. Although he's going to have less, he doesn't take that into consideration whatsoever because he has a generous heart. He literally, he's happy when he gives even beyond his capacity. And it says, vessels of gold. You'd say, maybe because they had all the, this, this gold jewelry and that excess, that's why they brought it. They gave away all the gold vessels. They left no gold for themselves. They gave all the gold to the Mishkan. You'd say, you give away your jewelry. But you leave gold for yourself. No, kol klezov. Anything that was gold, they gave away. Vama choch v'nezim shem amin. Then he says, he quotes the Apostle Shir Hashirim. L'kayim omro nogil nishobok. They gave away everything, and they say, our joy is when you have. That is our joy. When you have, that, that does for us. There's a post of Shir Hashirim, which the Gemara in Chagiga cites regarding Aliyah Saregel. First mission speaks in Chagig speaks about who is obligated to visit the Temple Mount on the Regalim and who's not, who's exempt. So over there, quotes a post in Shir Hashirim, which Shlomo Mel says, Mayofe Pamayich Bas Nodiv. Mayofu Pamayich, how beautiful are your paces? Bas Nodiv, the daughter of the, the Div, the philanthropist. Nodiv. So the Gemara says, who, who is Shalom Melch referring to? How beautiful are the paces of the Jewish people when they ascend the Temple Mount, who are the daughter of Nodiv, who are the daughter of Avram Avinu? And why is Avram Avinu called Nodiv? I should not vu rucho Lashem. He gave of his heart to God. He gave it all the way. He gave his entire heart. What's the heart? The heart is desires. 
all the desires of his heart, he dedicated to Hashem. So the Jewish people are referred to as Bas Nadiv, the daughter of the one who Nadvaruchal Hashem. So Rashi says he gave away all the desires of his heart to Hashem. We have many desires. Everything was dedicated to Hashem. And he lived every moment of his life only for God himself, not for himself. This was Avram Avinu. That's the Div Lev. The Div Lev means your heart is dedicated. Whatever the heart is, all the desires a human being has lie in the heart. All that those desires, give to Hashem. I had one special name in the Chofetz Chaim. We say in Abba Rabba, the Brocha before Kriyashma, V'yached l'vavenu li'ava l'yirashmecho. You should designate our hearts to be exclusive to love and to revere your name. We say it every day. The heart should be de- designated specifically, exclusively, only for the love and reverence of Hashem. So he explains it this way. He says... A person was one of the top diamond merchants, and it was known that he had these two very special, very precious gems, which no one else had. And the only one who who saw these gems was the, per- was the person who had it, had them, and the neighbor always wanted to see those gems, just to look at them, to see their beauty and why they were so exquisite and they were so special, one of a kind. And he wouldn't have the chutzpah to ask the person to show it to him. One day he has a knock on the door. The one who owned these gems says, look, I'm going out of town. I want, I want you to do me a favor. Could you keep these gems for me and watch them? They're very precious. And I feel you're responsible. And you're qualified to be the, the custodian, the showman to watch them. He says, of course, I'll watch them. But he says, I want to ask your permission. I've heard so much about those gems. I'd like to open the box with, where they lie just to look at them, and then I'll put it right back. He says, fine, I'll give you full permission. So he transfers this very ornate box to this neighbor, and as the person leaves, he opens the box, and the diamonds are wrapped in some kind of silk cloth. He opens it up, and in the box, together with diamonds, he finds decaying apple cores together with these very expensive diamonds. And he looks at it and he tries to figure out what, what are this de- decayed debris doing together with these diamonds. And he tries to, he says, doesn't make any sense. He has something so precious and with something so precious, you have all this garbage, decaying apple cores. So he says, you know, there must be something wrong with this man. How do you keep something so precious associated with something which, which has no value? It's literally garbage. So he says, the Chavetz Chaim writes, the heart is the location of love. And we love, we have Avas Hashem. We have reverence for Hashem. But in that same heart, we have love for other things. Things which are not appropriate, which don't go in tandem with Avas Hashem. It's almost like a disrespect. How do you have in the same location, love for A, love for B, if B itself is inappropriate to be associated in the same location with love for A? So therefore we ask Hashem, you should designate our hearts exclusively to love and revere your name. The love should only be for that, nothing else. That's the Chofetz Chaim. The Div Lev, you give Avram Avinu was the Nadiv, was the Nadiv. He gave his heart entirely to God. Any love he had in his heart was exclusively for Hashem. That, therefore, we are the Bas Nadiv. You know, the Gemara tells us in Shabbos, the two Amoroim, they were discussing whose Torah has greater value. So one of them says to the other, you know, a child is, who's not bar mitzvah, his Torah is purer than ours. So yes, how is it possible? 
He says, because you cannot compare a mouth that is tainted with sin to a mouth that's not tainted with sin. A child has no liability whatsoever. So a child who studies Torah, it's the purest Torah because the mouth that the Torah comes out of is a pure mouth. We, as special as we may be, there's no perfect tzaddik. There are times we may say certain things which are inappropriate. As a result of that, the mouth through which the Torah is expressed and is verbalized is slightly tainted. So that impurity which the mouth is touched with, the Torah passing through those lips, the Torah is minimized because of that. Therefore, the child's mouth is the purest. And therefore, the Gemara tells us that the Torah stands on Hevel Piyam Shal Tinok The vapor that comes out of the children who go to elementary school, beating these children, not Bar Mitzvah, the world stands on the purity of their Torah. And it refers to Hevel Piyam, the vapor that comes out of their mouths. That's the purity of those children. The Div Lev, Avramavu is the Nidiv Lev. So he speaks, he differentiates Nodva Rucho. And Nidiv Lev. Nidiv Lev is, the, is a noun. What a kind of heart do you have? You have a generous heart. That heart is designated only for generosity to give. So the Nidiv Lev is the person who's the soul ego. Because he is a Nidiv Lev, therefore he's uplifted by his heart. And even though he doesn't have necessarily the, the sufficient means, he gives as if he's a rich man for that reason. Because of that purity of his heart, all that matters is whatever has to be addressed is addressed. The Rabbam in Hilchus Talmud Torah, he quotes the Mishnah in the sixth parak of Pirkei Ovos, the Rabbam writes, which is the Mishnah, the Jewish people were endowed with three crowns. Kesekuna, Kesemalchus, Kesetorah. The crown of Kuna, priesthood, Malchus, royalty, and Keset Torah. Keset Kuna, who was it given to? Aaron the Lebonov. Aaron and children, they were given the crown of Kuna. Keset Malchus, Ledovid Lazaro. It was given to David and his progeny. Keset Torah, that was given to, to all the Jewish people. And quote, he quotes the Pasuk. It's the heritage of the congregation of Yaakov. It belongs to the Jewish people. Where is it? It's Munachas Bezovis. It's in the corner, and it's there. Kol Mishi Yovo Yovo Biyitlo. Whoever wants, they they're they're welcome to take that crown. Every one of us has relevance to them. Then the Rama goes to explain how does one acquire the crown of Torah. The others are an endowment. A coin is a coin because he's born a coin. One who's royalty, it's a reality. You're from the progeny of the Davidic line. Now, how does one acquire the crown of Torah? You have to acquire it. It's there to, for the taking, but how do you acquire it? So the Ramam says, Asher Niso Libo Lichnos Keset Torah. Hear what the Ramam says. Asher Niso Libo, the one who was inspired, uplifted by his heart to acquire the Keset Torah, and tells exactly what you have to do. Pas melch tochal, ma'im b'msura tishte, al oritz tishan, chay tzar techir. You drink, you eat bread and water, you, eat, you drink water in small measures, you sleep on the floor, and you live a life of the, 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 being deprived. Chay tzar techir means that even if you have to live a life of deprivation, you live it. That's how you acquire the crown of Torah. Meaning a level of full dedication. But the Rabbah uses the term, Ashe Niso Libo. He doesn't say, Ashe Nodva Rucho. The Rabbah is very selective in terms of his words. Ashe Niso Libo. Now, a person, one of us say, you know something? I would like to acquire the crown of Torah, and I look at the prescription. 
Pasmel Tochal, my Sur Tishta, Lord Tishan Heights, Sartichia. Okay, so I know exactly what I have to do. Unless it's the soul levo, it's not going to happen. The soul levo means that I'm so inspired to bring about that objective. All I want is to accomplish that. If that's what, what you touch by, then the whole bags. It's not a question is what am I giving? It's a realm what I'm giving. It's what I want. Another ruchu is, what am I giving? I have a generous spirit. How much should I give? So you say, give as much as you can. So once you say, give as much as you can, I think I've done enough. You know, I can only handle this for a short period of time. A person's soul libo, there's no such thing as a time limit. All that matters is I have to accomplish that. It's the achievement. If it's achievement, so if you're inspired because you want the achievement, then you're able to succeed by following that, that prescription. But if it's nadvu rucho, it's what does it cost me? What do I have to do to acquire it? I think I've done enough. It, you may do, be able to do it for a while. But once you've reached a certain point that you feel you've done enough, you stop at that point. In the soul libra, there's no stopping. Because the whole thing is the achievement. That's all that matters. Since what exactly what we're speaking here, there were two classifications of Jews who participated in the Mish- Mishkan. There's a, it was Ish, which is an expression of distinction. And the other was Nadvarucho, where it doesn't use the term Ish.